Mike Bond joined now by one of the biggest free agent signings in MMA of late, Mr. Paul Hughes, who is set to make his Bellator debut under the PFL banner at Bellator Champion Series June 22nd against Bobby King. Uh, Paul, it's probably been a, a whirlwind of a couple of weeks for you, man. Just how do you feel kind of sitting here now, fight scheduled, everything's announced, everything's out there. It must feel good. Yeah, it feels great, mate. Um, as the weeks have went on uh, since my last fight, it's probably three and a half weeks and about two weeks since I've signed with the PFL. So as the time has went on, the more and more chuffed I've been with the decision. And now we're back in the fight camp mode. You know, all it was nice having this crazy couple of weeks. It was it was a good type of busy. But right now we're we're back in the fight camp mode, and that's that's what I do best. Yeah, and of course you that win you alluded to April six, a uh, great win for Cage Warriors. Like, what's the the aftermath of those like those first few days? Um, are you kind of getting pulled in every direction? Are you just like instructing your management to figure everything out and call me when things are real? What's kind of the process of those few days in between you know that fight and when the signing is happening? Yeah, look, we were uh, we were on the ball right away after that fight. You know, I had uh, I'd been in that Cage Warriors. Uh, I'd fought for Cage Warriors a long time, you know, and to have that opportunity then to test free agency um, was was very, very exciting, you know, and straight after that fight, by the Monday morning, we had offers on the table, you know, and I think it was less than a week we had the deal done with the PFL. So they, uh, I, I actually opened communication with the PFL about six months before this, you know, we had an offer from them, but at the time, you know, I couldn't get out of the Cage Warriors deal, so I couldn't I couldn't entertain that. But the offer was there, and what that offer did was 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 change things for me. You know, because it then gave me it gave me I had six months to basically make this decision. You know, if this was the pathway that I wanted to go down. You know, and so I've had a lot of time to think about it. And as I said, since the deal has went since I since we done the deal and the time has went on, the even more chuffed I've been. So. I'm in a great place right now. Yeah. What were some of those things you kind of mulled over? Because of course, like, you know, the UFC, obviously it is what it is. There's kind of a lot more um, know-how given like their you know place in the industry. You're probably rolling the dice a little bit more with the PFL side of it. But what was kind of the things that ultimately made you trend in that direction and make this decision? Look, the main driving force behind it was, was the $2025 million tournament, you know, which I'll be entering look to i'm 27 years old man if i get the opportunity to have a million dollars in the bank at 27 i think i'm doing pretty damn good and i think it's something that like the, the fighters like look we need to capitalize in this game it's that simple you know the last thing i want is to be somebody who's given my life to this game and came out the other side with no money in the end of it so right now to have the opportunity to do something like that and not just that, you know, there's other things with signing the PFL. Number one, they believed in me, mate. They believed in me and, and they gave me a great offer. And they have been absolutely incredible to deal with so far. So it's very, very exciting on all fronts for me, you know, to take this next step in my career with the PFL. So I'm very, very excited to see what we can do together. Yeah, and their presence in Europe is obviously, you know, very strong right now and a lot more events than probably the UFC side is going to have like this year into next year. And it goes to show how quickly they got your debut booked, right? Um, was this part of the plan, like you knowing that they would be in Dublin in June and you being on that card or in the back of your mind, did you think you would maybe have to wait a little bit longer for the debut? Nah, look, it was a no-brainer, Mike. It was a no-brainer to have me in this card. You know, a lot of people... Because obviously, like what a lot of people aren't aware of when they see the Bellator Champion Series, they're not aware that the PFL have obviously acquired Bellator. So some people are were kind of like, what's going on here? But, you know, what I've signed to the PFL and the tournaments are stateside, you know. So for the next couple of years, I'll be competing in them tournaments all in the States, you know. Whereas I have the opportunity now to compete under the PFL Bellator banner at home just just a couple of months after I've signed. So it's it's very, very... It's very, very exciting that I've got the opportunity to do that. Yeah, and I think you wrote it well, I think, on your Instagram and being like, hey, this might be the last time for a couple of years that I'm going to be able to fight in front of my people and over here and stuff. Um, have you noticed that there's a lot of interest over there and a lot of people are going to be coming out just to see you and knowing that you might not be able to be fighting in front of them for a while? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if that doesn't give people even more incentive to come to come down to one of my fights, then... I don't know what will, you know, I think, uh, 
I think I've done a pretty good job so far of putting on very, very entertaining and big fights. So to to have this potential, potentially the last one in a couple of years at home, I think that's that's a pretty good selling point. Yeah, and what did you think of Bobby King when they brought you him? Like, did you not care about the opponent? But he's got he's got a little bit of experience, you know, within uh, the space for PFL Bellator. Um, what did you think of the matchup with him? Yeah, look, Bobby's been there with good guys. To be honest, look, I'll be honest with you. Whenever I signed, I knew that this Dublin card was going to be a thing, you know, because it was a no brainer. I asked, I asked for, I asked for Patricky Pitbull. I asked for Peter Quilly. These are the names that I was throwing out, you know. Unfortunately, these people weren't available, but I wanted, I said to them, get me the hardest fight you can, get me the biggest name value fight you can. And they love that, you know, they love to, to hear a young fighter coming out and saying that, but they said, look, we've got this guy for you. He's a, he's, he's accepted the fight and look, let's get the ball rolling. I was like, right, well, if, if these other guys aren't available, then that's all good. Let's get the ball rolling now with Bobby King. And look, I have no doubt, like Bobby's, Bobby's a, a great fighter and a tough guy, but look, I'm, I truly believe I'm one of the best in the world right now. Truly, truly believe that. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to make it look easy in there and I'm coming for my third first round finish in a row. That's, that's what I, that's what I plan to do in Dublin. Awesome. Yeah. It's going to be a wild scene there, man. I'm sure like that, that crowd is always amazing. I've been over there for a couple of fights and it's always phenomenal atmosphere. Um, as far as that, like you mentioned the tournament and all that, do you think after this one, you will have to take the break until that begins? Or do you think they might be able to get you another one in like this year before all that starts with the tournament? Yeah. So we, we have a plan in place. Now I, I would love to fight three more times this year. To be honest, like that's that's what I would love to do because I haven't been as active as I would have liked to have been the last couple of years with Cage Warriors. Not really my doing behind that, but uh, I would love three more this year. And I have some very, very exciting plans as to what them three fights could be. Whether or not they grant me the three, like I'm sure two is two's definitely in the cards. Um, so Dublin and another one, but I'm absolutely pushing for three. And that'll leave me 4-0 this year. And next year, I plan to go 4-0 again and win every single fight in that competition and win that million dollars. Yeah, and those tournaments are crazy. I mean, demanding schedule, all that stuff. Uh, lightweight's obviously a great division. There's one going on you know, as we speak. When you look at kind of the lay of the land, um, even some of the guys who could maybe come over from Bellator for next year, uh, what do you kind of think of like the depth of talent that you could potentially be facing in that tournament? it's a hell of a competition you know the way i've seen it and the way that i view it in my mind it's the ultimate con competition for the ultimate prize you know four fights in the space of eight to ten months against some of the best fighters and the hungriest fighters on the planet is uh <laughs> is a hell of a feat but as i said it's for the ultimate prize and i'm absolutely in the perfect point of my career right now to have them fights back to back to back especially another factor in being that I've moved up weight class for my last two fights, you know, so to not have like huge weight cuts or anything like that ahead of, ahead of me, that's a very, very important um, part of this puzzle. And it's an, a reason that I think gives me an edge next year going into that tournament. Yeah, no doubt. Um, and like, I know you don't want to think too far ahead, but when you think of that million, you kind of alluded to it, like that it can be life changing for a fighter in your position, not only to kind of invest in your own life, but your own career and things like that. Um, how do you kind of balance like knowing that that's hanging out there, but not like obsessing over it and things like that? You know what I mean? Like where it's a great prize at the end of the rainbow, but you have to put in the work to get there, obviously, first. Oh, damn right you do. Damn you. It's not an easy competition. Like, I truly, truly think it is one of the hardest competitions in all of sports, period. You know, to have four MMA fights in the space of eight to ten months against the best in the world, that's that's a hell of a feat, you know, and, and it will require everything. But look, I give everything to this game, and I truly, truly believe that that million dollars is going to be there for me next year. And look, mate, that's... Not a lot of fighters, you know, not a lot of fighters get the opportunity to come out the other side of their career and have some money in the bank. And that's just not how I want to be. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to join this competition is because I believe that I can win it, you know, and I can start setting myself up for life.
Yep, for sure. What what were those conversations? Because you go to like your your Instagram account, and it's hard not to see that photo right there of you and Connor and Ian Gary, right? And then you look at the fact that UFC three hundred three is a week after your debut was scheduled. And it's like, oh my god, if you had signed and you know on that card with Connor and Ian, that probably would have been a a dream come true experience as well. But um, we know like you know UFC has different standards for their signees most of the times. Um, it's, it's just kind of a different world over there. And you mentioned wanting to set yourself up for the future. And there's a much clearer path from what you're doing now there. I guess, what would you kind of say to, to anyone who questions like the choices you made between those two? Yeah, well, look, I mean, being on that card definitely wasn't off the table. You know, there's no reason why I, I wouldn't or couldn't have been on that card if I had it chosen to sign with the UFC, which I, of course, had an offer from. You know, these sort of things weren't off the table. But look, mate, like... I'm trailblazing my own path here. You know, I am on my own journey and I'm forging an, a new journey for myself, but also for younger fighters coming up through this game that have star potential. You know, you don't always have to just go this pathway of what you're being told to do, you know, and you're you're most likely not getting you're not getting compensated for it at the beginning of your career. You know, why should I why should you have to fight a few years before you start making money when you bring the value to the table? where you should be getting paid your worth. That's how I see it. And I understand if you're a young fighter coming up, you've got six, seven, eight fights and you don't really have a big brand for yourself. You haven't won world titles outside of the organization. Then then go down that pathway potentially. But mate, as I, as I mentioned, not a lot of fighters come out the other side of this game with money in the bank. And the value that I bring to this game and the value that I bring to, to my fights and the sport and the atmosphere and the feeling that I bring I deserve to be to to get compensated for that because I, I believe that I bring something different than other people do, you know? Yeah, for sure. And if I mean there may be someone who's watched this interview who hasn't seen you fight before or has just kind of had um your name pop up as this news came out, like what what can they expect out of you? What do you bring to the table that maybe um should motivate them to watch your fight on the twenty second and then all of them beyond? I would say go watch a couple of them. You know, honestly, I would say watch any of them because I haven't been in a boring fight in my entire career. And that's by choice. You know, I want to put on the most exciting fights that I possibly can for the fans because at the end of the day, what I'm selling is that feeling. You know, that feeling of watching me fight is like, that's what I'm selling. I want people to be like excited for this build up. I want to be going in there against the best in the world. I want people to be to be, I want it to be a spectacle, an event whenever I fight. And that's absolutely what I plan to do. And I've got a great partner in the PFL to to start doing that. Yeah, for sure. But, um, that that will, yeah. oh, sorry, you know, but it's, I, sorry to, to continue to do that because I've, I had huge, huge nights with Cage Warriors. I've put on the biggest nights in Cage Warriors history. Obviously Cage Warriors is, is an OG promotion here in Europe. You know, it's created the, some of the biggest stars the sport's ever seen. And I have put on the biggest fights that they've ever done, you know, so I continue, I will continue to put on the big nights. Yeah. And to go back to, you know, that photo with you and Connor and Ian, that was back in September, you posted that. Um, were some of these things you're talking about right now, conversations between you and guys, you and those guys, when you're maybe seeking some advice from, you know, Connor or whatever, like, are, are these things that you kind of touched on as far as career paths going forward? Yeah. So it wasn't something that I was thinking about back then because I still had fights in my cage warriors deal where I was at in my career at that time was kind of this limbo stage of like not really knowing what was next. You know, at, at that point it was a case of, you know, I had won the world titles. I'd done that when I was 24 years old, I had fought and cleared out all the best guys in cage warriors. And then it was, I was kind of in that point of my career where I didn't know what was next. You know, I had a, a a title to defend in cage wars i didn't know when the date was where i was going to defend that i was thinking about moving up weight class i had all these things and i was just in that state of limbo back then of of not knowing which is where you are a lot in this game you know there's it's it's hard to predict what's going to happen next but so the conversations at the time were more so a case of like it was more about staying in the fight and keeping the head strong you know and i always do that but to to have these opportunities to have conversations with the likes of conor mcgregor who's in my opinion the greatest to ever do it that gave me a, like a real deep a deep burning fuel you know to keep driving me on you know and to show me that i am on the right path you know here i am just a young lad from Derry, a wee lad from the country 
down having dinner with one of the greatest to ever do it in the sport so to get that was like a, a nice uh, a nice boost at the time for sure and just last kind of question on that and i i want to frame this properly so it doesn't come off as like a slight to connor ian but you know connor you could maybe argue he's who knows how many fights he has left at this point in his career right coming back from the big injury um ian you know lives and trains in brazil in the most part right now like you're the guy kind of doing it you're going to be fighting there i don't know when an opportunity will come for them like do you feel like right now you have the chance to kind of in the next couple of years be the face of irish mma well look i hope to be the co-face of irish mma because i hope to i hope to have a lot of people coming behind me as well you know you've got ian who's leading the charge right now yes he may live in brazil and and but he's still an irishman you know he's a fellow irishman and we support our own and i support him all the way so i hope to to be up there with the likes of ian but i also hope to have a few more irish fighters up there with us you know because we're uh we've been waiting some time you know since connor broke through the game it's we've been waiting on irish mma to come back and i think that this is the time now and i'm very excited to be a part of it yeah who do you think's the next one like from your team whether it's ufc or pfl bellator like even another promotion who do you think is the next guy uh, after you that we really need to watch out for good question so first name that comes to mind is a teammate patty mccory who just competed in the ultimate fighter grasso versus shevchenko so anybody that doesn't know patty go watch some of his fights and tune into the next season of the ultimate fighter whenever it comes out because He's a big hefty middleweight but he is exciting you know he is an exciting fighter to watch and a proper belfast lad you know so um uh, i hope to have the belfast belfast and ireland behind them awesome yeah i think that debut is june 4th or something so uh not a long wait now awesome man um well anything we didn't kind of touch on as far as like the signing or that you want to share for like a message or clarify kind of how this came together or do you think we hit it all no i think we've done a good job mate all right perfect man it was great to officially meet you for the first time obviously heard so many great things uh you work with amazing team and tim simpson as well who's i think one of the best in the game so yeah uh, keep killing it man have a great camp for this debut and we look forward to many more chats in the future sounds good mike really appreciate it thank you for your time